This lecture will cover mediated public speaking. This is something that we will be doing in this particular course, so we thought it would be wonderful to have your first lecture about mediated public speaking, what it is, the benefits, as well as the disadvantages of doing it. So this is something that we do on a daily basis, and many times we don't even think about it. Mediated communication is any type of a message that is transmitted through an electric form of communication. So if you send your friends a text message or a Facebook message, or if you send an email, all of those things are different forms or different methods of mediated communication. Now something to think about is that the preparation and delivery for speeches that have mediated communication, as well as the traditional face-to-face -face speeches they have a lot of characteristics that are similar. Mediated communication really became popular with the rise in technology because we're able to do so many different things just at the touch of a button. That's really what's helped propel mediated communication. Face-to-face -face presentations are still the preferred way of communicating, but Having that mediated communication opens up new ways to communicate with others. For instance, with the pandemic that recently hit, we all had to find out about mediated communication when all of the coursework moved online. So it's something that's not going away anytime soon. So different types of mediated presentations can include recordings for class such as what I'm doing now and what you will be doing in the future. Also, many job interviews are done with Skype because often the person who's looking for the job as well as the employer are in different locations. And so it's just easier to conduct that interview over Skype. There's podcasting and also say there's a lot of salespeople who use this form of communication when they're trying to pitch a product to potential buyers. Mediated communication is growing and more than three fourths of colleges and universities have turned to online teaching or they offer students an opportunity through online teaching. And then that number is only going to grow, especially with the recent pandemic where everything had to transfer to being online. It's very important that students still are able to learn and it's important for educators to get their message to those students as well. So it's not just universities that are using it. High schools and even elementary schools have been using it because we really didn't have any other safe way for the educational process to continue. So we're gonna talk about two different types of communication. One is pre-recorded, where a person can record their speech and other people can listen to it at their leisure. And the other is real time, where the speaker and the audience are both in the same location. There's several advantages to having mediated presentations and mediated communication. One of the biggest ones is the flexibility and that a person can watch a lecture or a video at their own leisure rather than having to be in one location where that speaker is at that same time. Another benefit is that it really saves time and money because People don't have to travel to be in the same location in order to have a message sent to the receiver. Also, the audience size is very important. So many times venues have limited seating capacity, so not everyone who may want to hear a presentation will be able to do so. But if you record that speech, anyone who wants to listen to it is able to do so at their own leisure. More advantages of pre-recorded speeches are do-overs. If you didn't like the way it turned out the first time, you can always do it again. 
there's a pause and rewind buttons. You can go back, you can look at it and say, oh, wait a minute, that's not what I meant to say. Let me change it. You also have the option to save it in a number of locations, which is something I strongly recommend that you do. Once you make your videos, make sure that you save it in more than one location because with technology, you may lose it on one device. So it's always good to have it somewhere else where you can always go back to it if you need to. There's several advantages of having real-time technology, one of which is the audience feedback. So if you are right there with the audience, you will have that immediacy right away. And so if you're doing a great job, you're gonna know. Flip side of that, if you're not doing so well, you're gonna know that as well. But if you are recording your presentation, you get both because you have the option to save it and a person can hear the presentation later. Something that I have noticed is that a lot of times I miss something the first time, but if I go back and look at it again, I hear something that I didn't hear the first time. So there's a lot of advantages to having that information recorded because there may be messages that you didn't pick up on the first time that you will get the next time that you see it. Let's talk about some of the challenges of mediated communication. One of the biggest ones is that the speaker loses the ability to be natural. So many times people come across as theatrical if they have to do it over and over and over again, and then pretty soon they start sounding robotic. Whereas when you do it real time, what you see is what you get right then and there. So that's something that you're really gonna have to work on when you're making your presentations. We want you to practice these, but we also want you to try to be as natural as possible. And that's one of the challenges that you must overcome when you are doing your recorded presentations. Another challenge is that you lose the immediacy. That means that if you're doing wonderful and your audience is there, you can feel it. The atmosphere can be electric, especially with a wonderful presentation. When it's recorded, you obviously don't get that. Um, speakers and their audience also have the ability to connect with one another if it's real time. Whereas if you're speaking into a camera, obviously you're not gonna be that connected to the camera. So that's another drawback to having recorded presentations. There's also the challenge of multitasking. Let's face it, we're busy people. We all have a lot to do. And so a lot of times you will be watching TV or maybe texting your friend while you're watching a video. Whereas if it's real time, more than likely, especially out of common courtesy, you will focus on the speaker and what that person has to say. So multitasking can be a challenge, especially if you're watching a pre-recorded video. So kind of keep that in mind. Another big challenge, talked about it earlier, technical difficulties. What happens if you do all of this work and then you lose your speech? Trust me, I know that firsthand. I had gotten all the way to almost the last slide of this presentation and I deleted the entire thing. I am a genius, yeah. So be careful, make sure that you don't do what I did because it didn't make me very happy and it only made me frustrated. So you don't wanna do that. You want to save your work in more than one location as well. You need to think about your delivery when you make your presentation. Number one, your voice. Make sure it's the right volume. You're not yelling. Make sure you're not whispering because you can lose your audience either way. If a person has to strain to hear what you're saying, then sometimes you lose them because they're like, well, why should I listen? I can't hear what they have to say anyway. Another thing, 
if a person feels like the speaker is yelling at them, then you're not going to want to listen to that because you're going to feel like, why are they fussing at me? I don't need to, to pay attention to that. So you don't want to lose your audience by doing either of those things. Check your volume. Check your tone as well. Make sure that you have the right tone when you're delivering your presentation. You can emphasize some words, especially if you're trying to stress a point. And one important thing is try to check the rate that you're speaking. A lot of times when people get nervous, they speak very quickly. And so you don't want your audience to try to have to race to try to keep up with what you're saying, because that can be very frustrating for them as well. So if you have a tendency to do any of these things, then you'll know that that's something that you'll want to work on when you're making your video presentations. Eye contact is essential. Make sure if you're doing a recording that you look at the camera because it gives the audience the feel that you're looking at them. And if you are doing it real time, make sure that you address all areas of the room. There's so many times that a speaker will look toward one section of the room, but not the other section of the room. And so if you want your entire audience to feel connected to you, it is important that you pan the entire room so that you will capture your audience and you will keep your audience engaged if they feel that you are actually participating with them as far as the speech is concerned. Very important. Practice, practice, practice. Now, I know I've said earlier, you don't want to sound like it's theatrical, where I am robotic, but you do need to practice your speeches because sometimes people have gotten up and just spoken impromptu and it was a mess. So you don't want that to happen to you. You want to keep your audience engaged with what you're saying. And in order to do so, that requires practicing. And so you may have to do a take more than one time. There have been times where I have messed up with the recording and I've just left it in there because I would have messed up in person. So you might as well get who I am. This is the real me. Okay. You want to be genuine when you make your presentations. You don't have to have a perfect presentation. Everyone's human. Everyone makes mistakes. So if they're minor, I wouldn't worry about it. Only if it's something that's really, really big, then you'll want to probably redo that one. Also, make sure that your camera operator is in a good location for you when you're doing your presentation. And if you're doing it from a cell phone, make sure that it's not being held by someone or if it is that they have real good steady hands. I, for one, don't have the best hands, and so sometimes I'm shaky and you get seasick <laughs> while watching it. You don't want your audience to get ill by watching your video because it's shaking so much. So make sure you have a stand for it or a solid location where it won't be moved. With your camera, you can use anything an iPad, a smartphone, a laptop, any good quality um, camera would be good for you to use. But just make sure that it is of good quality because you don't want to have a video where it's hard to hear you or where it's hard to see you because those are also distractions that can lose your audience as well. Make sure of your background, make sure it's professional, that you don't have people walking back and forth because that is a major distraction. I will tell you, I've been on several Zoom meetings with individuals and they would have people running behind them or walking behind them and I would lose track of everything that they were trying to say because of the distraction. So make sure that you have a good location where there's no disturbance, you have good light, and it is a professional type setting. Also try to avoid the background noises because those also can become a major distraction. With your attire, make sure that it's professional. I believe for the persuasive policy speech, it does call for 
professional dress. For the other speeches, you don't have to worry about wearing a suit and tie or a dress or anything like that, but you do want to make sure that you are dressed appropriately and that you do look nice for your presentation because it will reflect on you. With your camera positioning, make sure that the view is wide enough. So if you have certain gestures that you want to make to stress a point that we can see that, but also be careful that you don't do too many. Also make sure that you don't have that nervous movement. A lot of people will go side to side or front and back. They don't even notice it. It is one of those nervous habits that people have, but even though they may not notice it, the audience does. So be aware of any tendencies that you may have, such as swaying or using your hands too much, playing with your hair, doing other, other things that can be a distraction from what you're trying to have. And that is have your audience engaged with your presentation. So there's certain considerations that you should have for real-time presentations. First of all, you need to practice with your equipment, make sure it's working. There's nothing worse than trying to get ready for a presentation and it doesn't work for you. And it happens all the time. So you wanna make sure that you got that going and you don't have any problems with it. And it's also important to practice with the technology that you plan to use for your presentation. Make sure that your internet connection as well as it works well because with this being an online class, you really have to have good Wi-Fi. Okay, so if you haven't already watched the videos in module one for guidelines, be sure and do so because that will help you get ready for video conferencing. And that is the last slide that I have for this presentation. And I look forward to talking to you some more in other presentations. I'll talk to you later.